Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a roadmap update looking at changes this week to features for the Persistent Universe in a bit more detail as well as a slew of ship updates all for the week ending the 15th of September 2019. From CIG's roadmap roundup and the actual roadmap itself, various features are now in their polishing phase and ready to be deployed in Alpha 3.7. So we've got FPS mining, harvestables, weapon attachments version 2, the Hedger B Salvo frag pistol, and the Kroneg FL-33 laser cannon. Ship rentals have had their task list actually expanded out, so it's not one of two tasks done. It's now 13 of 18 tasks completed. Again, that's uh, for 3.7. Uh, the Cutlass Blue has actually been moved from 3.8 to 3.9. This is uh, for a couple of reasons. The Banu Defender is taking longer than initially planned. We know it's been delayed effectively by two quarters. The Defender is still planned for 3.7 but um, has caused a little bit of a knock-on effect of them having to choose whether they prioritise the Cutlass Red or the Cutlass Blue. One of them had to be basically moved back a quarter, and they chose the Cutlass Blue to be moved back. And so we will still be seeing the Cutlass Red in 3.8. Work on the Hull C continues, but its release is currently blocked by a few tech prerequisites, including a physics refactor, as well as additional work from the engine team that will create scalable and multiple physics grids. They are prioritising the ship's needs for Squadron 42 first, and the work that they've got planned for that, which is going to be finalised in Q4 this year, isn't quite enough for it to be then put into the Persistent Universe. It requires a bit more additional work um, after that. Ship-to-ship -ship docking requires um, several bits of tech sort of coming together, including the physics refactor, before it's ready for the Persistent Universe. They have taken the features as far as they can without the additional tech um, that they're waiting for, and they've retasked the team that was working on that onto other priorities while they finish off the other tech they need. They are developing a new type of damage for the Lightning Bolt Co. Electron Sniper Rifle, and the tech for, uh, for that damage type isn't ready yet, uh, so that's moving to 3.9. All new planned mission givers, so uh, Lisa Gibbs, uh, Devin Batista, Eddie Parr, and in fact all future ones, they're tied to specific locations, and those locations may need to be completed too um, for the deployment of those mission givers. So Batista and Gibbs are for Crusader and Orison, and Eddie Parr is for Microtech New Babbage version 2, so not in the uh, initial version that we will see. Uh, they're still doing work on the specific characters. That's not really the issue though, it's if those locations aren't completed uh, and ready to go, then they can't deploy the mission givers there, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. If anything moves with those locations, then the mission givers will move with them. The sneak peek in this week's newsletter is of uh, the Banu Defender in a hangar, uh, which looks pretty cool, a lot like a crab or a gorilla maybe walking towards you. Uh, there is also a Star Citizen Ship Showdown community event that CIG are running at the moment, where backers are supposed to support their favourite ship with a screenshot or video or picture or photo or song or any type of art and craft, and then share it with the uh, hashtag SC Ship Showdown. I'll link it down below if people are interested. Some Anvil Arrows are going to be given out as prizes. Also, the sort of like top 16 most popular ships are then going to duke it out in some other round uh, afterwards. Uh, and then eventually this will boil down to the top four ships. And then they're going to have some surprises with those ships happening later this year. I suspect that there will be some loadout and skin variants like the Masters of Flight series we had a few years ago. Continuing talking about ships, we had a juicy Star Citizen Live all about ships and frequently asked questions about them. Uh, I'll summarise it. The 890 jump, let's start with that. The uh, jump's fuel is bugged currently. It uses far, far too much and obviously at the moment you can only refuel in atmosphere uh, at Lawville or at uh, Area 18. That's not great, that's not ideal. Uh, we're going to see a lot less fuel usage soon, but uh, capital ships are supposed to be quite expensive to um, to use, um, especially even with just the fuel costs. Some turrets of the A90 jump will be made into sort of like point defense system turrets that you can put AI blades into, uh, effectively having them as, as auto turrets. But they are not adding additional turrets to the ship, they're just uh, allowing you to turn some of those turrets into those point defense type systems. They will balance the 890 weapon loadout in the future if necessary. This could potentially see the ship getting quad mounted guns on its mounts rather than the mounts sort of like increasing in size. So uh, more generally manned turrets in the future should be able to be manned but also um, have an AI module for automation, be remotely controlled or slaved 
uh, by the pilot. Uh, 890 jumps will have VIP missions associated with them. We should see similar missions to that of the Starliner as well. The Parasite docking for the Constellation, so the Merlin P-52 and assumedly P-72, should be working for when they add the ship-to-ship -ship docking, which is currently planned for Alpha 3.8 by the end of the year. There's currently a bug as well that your ship systems power off when you get out of your seat. That's unintended. IFCS Assist is meant to replace the hover mode and allows you to fly closer to things um, and sort of scales down your acceleration so you can move more precisely. V12 thrusters rotate down via a button press and is separate from the proximity assist mode. There will be more additions to the flight model after 3.7. The strength of thrusters will be scaled down in atmosphere, that sort of stuff but we should see lots and lots of tweaks to the flight model as they go forward. Fighters have been called interdictors on the ship matrix. They're sort of like incorrectly named, um, some of those. They're actually technically interceptors, typically being better at higher speeds or having higher sort of like SEM speeds. Um, interdiction in the game is going to be bringing ships out of uh, or preventing them going into quantum travel. Interceptors are typically fighters um, or dogfighters that can rapidly be deployed and then get to a target quickly to do some damage or slow them down while other forces are, are coming in. There are still plans for the Banu Merchantman and uh, Defender to have some form of interplay with each other. I suspect that it's going to be some light form of docking, um, so they're both like parasite dock with each other or both be able to use the, the Merchantman's sort of like quantum fuel or maybe be able to refuel the Defender itself, something like that. The Vanguard Sentinel at release will not have uh, the AR cockpit, e pod, and its decoy missiles. It does, however, have an EMP at the moment that's going to work similar to that of the Warlock, but it will be different eventually later. Currently, um, that uh, Vanguard Sentinel also has an all-distortion weapon loadout and slightly less armor than a standard Vanguard. The Harbinger has three size 5 torps, more armor, and is slightly slower, uh, and has ballistic cannons on the nose. I'm not particularly impressed with the Harbinger's loadout. Um, it's... Uh, I quite like the idea of the Sentinel, but not potentially the, the, the Harbinger. I, I like um, E-Warfare and some of the cool stuff that that might bring, but uh, the Harbinger just doesn't have enough enough torpedoes or big enough torpedoes or, or something. It just doesn't do it for me. Uh, you can buy the nose gun variants from shops in 3.7 for the Vanguards, apparently. The retractable turrets for the ship will be coming later. Physicalized ship components are being worked on. They need to hook them up to the item controller and then um, they'll be able to add the physical items into the ships and then the ships should hopefully use them correctly. Subcomponents will be coming after that. Cargo containers that are ship items, so like the store or box in the Aurora, as well as the Mustang and Hornets, uh, non-traversable cargo sort of like pod scenarios, and they need to be sort of updated to be able to be used properly, but they didn't give any form of dates of when they're going to be doing that. Um, auto gimbal changes are being looked at, not in 3.7 though. There is going to be size 1 gimbal mounts that allow size 1 weapons on starter ships to be mounted sort of like ignoring the normal sizing restriction for them. So you'll be able to use auto gimbals on starter ships on their size 1 mounts with size 1 weapons. Madness. Uh, some ships like the Hurricane are not balanced in game yet. Turret improvements are coming in the future and they want them to be as effective as um, another ship almost. So it, it, they want people to want to be in turrets and uh, over bringing another ship along sort of thing. Although it's going to be cheaper, obviously, running one ship than it is two ships, things like that as well. There are going to be other benefits. They'll balance this sort of stuff out um, later on in development. Quantum travel improvements are coming, lots of them in fact. Um, you're going to be able to jump from a lower height in orbit, it sounds like, as well, closer to the ground. And we'll have to see exactly how they balance that in the future. The flight model is still getting updates. Thruster efficiency and balance will be changing, rebalancing them for atmospheric flight, as well as space combat and accelerations getting uh, mixed up, or at least um, updated and balanced. They don't want ships fighting at incredibly high speeds, is one of the things. Uh, retaliators um, might be getting a bit more of a torpedo loadout, potentially rotary launchers, so they can have more torpedoes on the ship. And either slaving or automating some of the turrets is potentially a thing in the future as well. They need to tune uh, ships, weapon aiming, pips, ESP, uh, and sort of like get all of that balanced and more consistent and more predictable, and they are working on that. Vandal ships will receive updates at some point. I believe the cockpits of the Vandal Blade and Vandal ships in general are a bit different to the human converted ones because Vandal are larger than humans. And that's it for this week. What do you think? Do you have any questions? Are you excited for Alpha 3.7 coming at the end of September? Uh, whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below.
Every month we have a ship giveaway for September 2019. It's for an Anvil Carrack, the mighty exploration ship. It is being donated by the organization Ultra. They are a chaotic, neutral, multi-role org where they encourage their members to focus on their speciality uh, and find their speciality, and they provide them the freedom to play however they want. In Ultra, you're not just another drone. You become part of a family is the idea. Links below to check them out. They are recruiting. To be in for a chance of winning that ship, just comment on any of my videos made during September though. A random comment will be chosen as uh, the winner. More details below. I am also shilling for NordVPN and Shadow Gaming PCs. So um, use the code BoardGamer for discounts there. NordVPN in a world of censorship and privacy issues, VPNs allow you to browse the net and play games in more safety. NordVPN has many benefits over free VPNs and that's why I shill for it. Uh, some of you also might be interested in shadow cloud gaming stuff. Uh, this allows you an alternative to sort of like buying and maintaining your own gaming PC. You can stream a custom Windows 10 environment to devices like your phone, a laptop, or a crappier, lesser PC. And bam, it's fantastically powerful and it's maintained and hardware is regularly updated for you. It's a fantastic service, Shadow. Cloud gaming certainly has quite a big future ahead of it. If you'd like to further support my channel, please consider subscribing, sharing this video, ringing the YouTube bell so you get notifications when a video goes live. This is a channel that is funded by the community via donations, Patreon members, YouTube members, um, and anyone else that wants to get involved with comments and helping. Thank you to everyone that goes the extra mile. Take care, and I will see you in the verse.